So she said, I just took a really hot bubble bath. And when I got out, I had this piece of chocolate cake and it was a, the biggest piece of chocolate cake that I could find. And for 10 minutes, I actually felt better. But just about the point where I got to the end of the cake, I started crying for him and really missing him. And I say it like that because we think that when we're doing our self-care, that that is going to take care of our grief. When we're doing our self-care, that it's going to make the pain of the grief go away. And the truth is, they're two separate subjects. And yeah. a lot of people don't understand that. No, no. We, we have talked to so many people and they're like, well, I'm in therapy. Like, I'm doing something to get help. Why do I feel still feel like this? Well, because you're grieving. And that's how it goes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I don't care how much chocolate cake you have. That's only going to make your butt bigger, but not your grief go away. <laughs> so true. So let's talk about why self-care is important when you're grieving, Erica. And self-care isn't always chocolate cake in a bubble bath. Self-care could be, I got to sit quietly and allow these feelings in and cry it out today. That's self-care. Yeah. Not existing is self-care. Self-care is the things that you do for yourself to be okay with where you're at. You have to take care of your health. So it means you have to take care of, take your medication. You have to go to the dentist and get your teeth cleaned. By all means, you don't have to take a bath if you don't want to. A lot of grievers tell us they struggle with even getting in the shower. Don't do it. That's also self-care. If you can't do it, then don't do it. You've got to go to the doctors and get checkups. That's part of your self-care. That's not going to do anything with your grief. No, it's not. It's, it definitely does not take the uh, weight of the pain. Um, no matter, like you said, no matter how much chocolate cake you, you eat, no matter how much wine you drink, no matter yeah. how many times you go to the gym, you're still going to feel those feelings. You're still going to feel sad. You're still going to be replaying the entire relationship in your head and all the things yeah. that you should have said or the places yeah. you should have went. It's, yeah. it's just part of it. Yeah. We encourage self-care because we give you tips for self-care because a lot of times grievers, <clears throat> they neg neg negate their self-care because they're grieving. But the truth is things still have to have happen. It's called grieving and living. We want you to do the self-care for yourself. Sometimes the self-care, Erica, you tell grievers all the time, if your self-care today is that you're going to stay in bed all day and cry it out, that's absolutely okay. Mm -hmm. Just let today staying in bed, crying it out, become three months. Yeah. I had, I remember how I had someone, uh, they sent me an email, like just sharing their condolences after Donovan died. And they were like, you know, if it gets too unbearable, like go outside and take a walk. And I was like, what, why would I go outside and take a walk? But you know, when I, think about it. You like, if you get outside and you're walking and then you're looking at the trees. And then for me, I'm looking at the cows and you know what I mean? It's like, that is part of self-care. It's just kind of change of scenery sometimes can yeah. get you in a different headspace. So now yeah. it makes total sense to me. And in the moment I was like, okay, but it's part of it. It is yes, part yes. of that's, that can be self-care, just getting out and taking a walk but it doesn't mean it's going to stop your grief. No, crying it out and crying all day is self-care. Mm -hmm. That's you. It, Cause what happens when you cry is you release the emotional energy that comes along with grief and you're releasing that pain. That's self-care. 100%. Yeah. Telling your fans and friends and family, I can't come to your birthday party is self-care. Yeah. No is self-care. Yeah. That's Lord huge. knows. Or Forcing yourself to go somewhere when your heart is really not in it and you're broken is like the worst thing that you can do because then yeah. you end up making everybody else around you miserable because you're miserable and you should, you knew you should have stayed home, but you yeah. force yourself. Yeah. So absolutely saying no to things that you don't want to do is a hundred percent self-care, but again, yeah. it doesn't make the grief just stop because you're acknowledging, yeah. you know, that you have this pain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a lot of us 
don't truly understand what self-care really is. And so we think that when we're doing the self-care that we're actually grieving. And the truth is they're two separate things because the grieving is when you really go in and review the relationship and you look at all the parts that are missing, all of the things on the journey that you still need to say. The grieving, the self-care is what's gonna help you survive until you get to the part where you can actually do the grief. Yeah. They have different definitions. Yeah, and we we know like in the first six months, um, the full weight of the grief hasn't hit you yet. You mm-hmm. think it has. You think that you're in the the okay this is as bad as it's going to get no it gets worse after that time period and it's important to really honor self-care during that time but it's still gonna take a lot more to get you through to a healthier place yeah um a lot of times we'll meet um grievers and they think that they're and i may have said this already but they think that all the self-care they've done equals healing yeah it equals the healing and you're, and we're like, no girl, that was chocolate cake, you know, (laughs) um, even like going on a trip. Right. So a lot of times we'll get a lot of grievers that just want to go, they want to run. They want to go away from where they're at. You did a little bit of that. I did a lot of that. I did a lot of that after Donovan. I tried to trick myself into thinking that if I got like a legit change of scenery, like if I'm not in my house, I wouldn't feel the pain you absolutely feel the pain. You feel it in your house. You feel it in the Airbnb. You feel it in the VRBO. You feel it in the car. What, what is your saying? You always say, uh, wherever you go, there you are. Like you're yeah. taking it with you. So you can't yeah. just, you know, change your location and think that your grief is going to stay where you left it. So the second Thanksgiving after Donovan died, you decided to go to the, um, hunting camp. What do you call that? The deer lease. The deer lease with Lewis. You decided to go the deer lease with Lewis because you were like, I can't be here for Thanksgiving. When you made the decision to go to the deer lease, that was your Mm self-care. That was you going, I can't be home for Thanksgiving without Donovan here. I'm going to go to the deer lease. That was self-care. That wasn't grieving. Yeah. No, that was definitely self-care because at least I was with him and Jordan because he, Jordan hunts as well. So they would leave and I would be here by myself. And I was like, that was miserable. I don't want to do that anymore. So at least I'm with them and they're holding my space. And we actually had sandwiches on Thanksgiving because I had no desire to cook or anything like that, that made it feel like a holiday. And, um, it was like well, white knuckling it through, I guess, kind of. But then it eventually, I did that for a few years in a row and it got to the point where I did finally cook a traditional meal and, and it didn't kill me. And I was like, okay, I survived that. Like, okay, I can do more. It's slowly but surely. Well, I just wrote down the word sandwiches because you the fact that you made sandwiches was self-care. Yeah. A part was the self-care. This is the a self-preservation. This is what I can handle today. I can make, yes. look, make sandwiches. Y'all want peanut butter or jelly? You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> or a combo. <laughs> right, exactly. Or you can get the combo. <laughs> um, that was totally self-care. And that is what, that was all that you can manage to do yeah. that day. And if that's all you can manage to do that day, my friends, that is okay. Tell me, correlate this self-care of making the sandwiches to what at grieving would look like what would the would actual have. grieving look like that day what did it look like that day what would it have what would it look like that day so I made the sandwiches that was my self-care what did grieving look like sitting in front of the tv zoning out just trying to lose myself in something other than my reality and that's that's what it was looking like yeah and also um Grieving of that day didn't necessarily have to come with tears. It could be just that sitting there, just thinking, staring far off, just thinking of Donovan. Could mm-hmm. have been your Which I did that that as way. well, because in the evenings, the sunsets, uh, the deer lease is in South Texas. The sunsets are so beautiful and so amazing. And I spent a lot of time outside taking pictures of them and just like feeling the full weight of it in my heart. Cause you're looking at something so beautiful 
And the one person I wanted to share that with was not here. Yeah. So it was a lot of that. A lot of grieving and self-care. What we really want to talk to you guys about is really just not conflating the two and mixing them up. Self-care is extremely important for the griever, 100%. Number two, grieving is even more important. And you've got to know that. But a lot of times what happens, Erica, even our friends will come in and they want to fill our grief basket with self-care. Mm-hmm. Instead of allowing us the space to grieve, they want to fill our basket with self-care. So they're like, come on, let's go to the spa and get a massage. Mm-hmm. I actually had a, a friend after Austin died, a coworker of mine that booked a massage for us. And I ended up calling her the day of, I couldn't even get out of bed, you know? So yeah. it's like, yeah, that's the thought of, well, I'll just take, you know, take her out for a massage and, you know, make it better. It, I couldn't, even, I could not get out of bed. The thought yeah. of showing up at the spa was so undesirable. Like it was like, she wanted to take me to a garbage dump. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when your heart's broken, that's what it feels like. Yeah, exactly. So when you're the person that's trying to help your friend through uh, the loss, ask them if they think they would like to do that. Because most of what we can give them is going to be the self-care. The grieving has to be done by you, the griever, 100%. 100% it has to be done by you, the griever. They might not be able to handle it. And we may think we have the best idea hey girl, would you like to go to the nail spa and let's, you know, get some foot massages? They may want to do that. Mm-hmm. And then again, on the other hand, they may not be able to handle it. And don't be offended if they can't handle it. Be okay right. with it. Exactly. Exactly. Because that's what they need. They need that yeah. kind of unwavering support, no matter what the situation. Do your self-care. You're going to need it to survive. Absolutely do your self-care. But more importantly, allow the grief to be there. It's okay. okay. Yeah, 100%. I promise you won't die from the grief being there. No. It hey, feels like if it. you want more tips like this, we would love to have you in our Facebook group. That's where we are hanging out every day. And we're just giving you tips on how to survive the pain. Thank you, my friends. Bye, friends.